checking my heart rate. Man, I need to get in shape, man. 98, 98. Hi, sis. Checking my heart rate. 98. Man, my heart started going a little bit faster just but through the increase of uh, just turning these pedals here. This is an indication that uh, I got some work I need to do. Hey, good evening, everyone. God bless you. Come on in, come on in. Those of you that are watching with us or joining us live here at the Bridge Church of Alabama, we praise the Lord for you, for you coming in and joining us tonight. I may be acting like a, well, not acting. <laughs> I'm a little bit out of breath, you know, as you can see. We've got the, uh, we're continuing from last week's Bible study where we're uh, working out our soul salvation with fear and trembling. But the Bible tells us that he prays that our, that we prosper even as our soul prosper and that we be in good health. And so last week we began to talk about good health and talked about our bodies last week. And so this week, we want to continue, uh, and I say we because the Lord has blessed us where we had an opportunity to allow uh, God to give us uh, our first lady back. She's back from Africa. She just got in from Kenya on, uh, was it Sunday? Sunday night. God got in from Kenya Sunday night, and so we're, we're happy, and she'll be joining us in a minute uh, on stage here. Uh, just wanted to get everyone's attention as we go forth. As you can see, we got a couple of things going on here, and I'm just taking advantage of an opportunity to, you know, work certain muscles that haven't been worked in a while. And I don't know if you tuned in last week, but if you were here last week, you saw what we were doing last week. And uh, it just kind of kind of got me motivated. Uh, last night, I was in the garage prepping the garage so I can get my treadmill, you know, uh, stretched out so I can begin to start doing my, 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 my personal training uh, because even after last week's Bible study last week, I kind of I realized that, hey, man, I, I need to, uh, there's some things that I need to do. We can talk the talk, but the question is, can you walk the talk? And so, you know, we talk a lot about practicing what we preach. One of the things that we love to do here at the British Church of Alabama is that we love to lead by example. And I say love to lead by example because we realize that as a leader, it's a privilege and an, and an honor to be able to lead God's people. But God, acknowledge, God makes, makes it known that he expects us to lead by an example. And so I can't in, encourage you to do some things that I'm not even encouraged myself to do. One of the things that I know that I'm encouraged to do is to get this body in shape, to get it back to, a, to its optimum working, um, what is it, optimum working um, machine. I wanted to become a, an optimum working machine. I wanted to be, be able to work at its fullest because I don't know where God's going to have us go this year. Um, Sunday, if you joined us, join in with us on Sunday, Sunday I told you, that this year is a year of do better. We're going to do better. This is, a, this is a do better year. And so we're looking forward to doing that. And so as we prep, I'm going to go ahead and get the stage ready. Uh, I want you all to join in. Remember, this is a Bible study where we encourage interaction. We don't want you just to be a side, uh, you know, be on the sidelines um, as though this is an event for you to watch and, and we're entertaining anybody tonight, we want you to get involved. I, I appreciate everyone last week. You got involved in the Bible study last week. We had a chance to talk, and, and I don't know if you had a chance to think about some things over the course of the week, uh, but as I said, we're going to continue to this week's Bible study, and I don't know where the Lord is going to take us next week. I don't know if we're going to finish up tonight or not, uh, but we will continue to discuss what God expect out of us on an individual basis. A lot of times, you know, we do things in the church, and it's a group, a corporate thing that we do in the church. But uh, this, this month, I know the Lord is talking to us in terms of what is our personal responsibility to him, not what our responsibility is to the pastor, what not our responsibility is to the leaders of the church, but what is our responsibility to the Lord. And so as we prep this, I'm going to... Um, 
ask the first lady, she's here, I'm going to ask the first lady to pray while I set the, set the stage. We're going to pray together, but I'm going to be moving so that I won't take up too much time. So first lady, if you don't mind, sweetheart, go ahead and pray us into tonight's Bible study as I get things organized here tonight. Good evening, everyone. Let's go into a word of prayer. Father, we bless you this evening. We thank you for uh, this opportunity, Lord, to fellowship one to an with another. We thank you that as the word goes forth tonight, Lord, that you, Father God, will make an impartation. Father, we pray that as we leave this service tonight, Lord, that we will not only be hearers but doers of your word. Father, allow us to remember, Lord, that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that um, we know that clean and unclean things cannot uh, uh, occupy the same vessel. So, Father, we thank you now that as we submit ourselves, Lord God, to you, we thank you that your Holy Spirit dwells within us. And we pray, Lord, that any and everything that is not of you, Father, that it be uprooted, dried up, Father God, and cast out now. We thank you now. We just give you all the praise, glory, and honor. May your anointing be upon our ears that we may hear and that our hearts be tilled and ready to receive your word tonight. We thank you, Lord, that as we uh, uh, prepare, Father God, to sup, we thank you, Lord, that our hunger, Father God, will be um, fulfilled and in our thirst, Father God, that we, it will be quenched. So we thank you and we just give you all the praise, glory, and honor for your service tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. First lady, you can join us at any time, man, whenever you're, you're able. You get your mic ready here. Amen. And so, praise God. We wanted to uh, let me go. So, welcome back to the Bridge Church of Alabama, dear sweetheart. Yeah, can you get in there? Yes. You might have to. I don't know how you want to adjust that. I got a real high book. Here we go. I just want you to want to make sure that it's uh, it's you're able to talk in it though. Good. All right. So while she's getting that ready, let me. Uh, well, I wanted to discuss with her a little bit. So how was your trip? amazing <laughs> totally amazing um I, I, there are no words to just um i guess to summarize just the the entire experience uh, i want to uh, thank all of those who uh, helped partner with me for me to take advantage of this i could not have done it without you um and those people they know who they are and i'm sure actually i can say that everyone who even uh, said a word of prayer, basically partnered yeah, with me. Right. So it, it wasn't really about the finances because I felt your prayers. Yes. Um, God just moved in. Oh gosh. Mm. <laughs> um. I, I, so many. It, it's so it was such a a great experience. Uh, but I will say that I believe that it was life changing for me. I think that. Um, Having the opportunity to be there um, under uh, the leadership of Deidre Anderson uh, and Women Empowered International yeah. mm -hmm. and her program, We Next. Um, she is like no other. Uh, mm. she, she really blazes a trail um, just for empowering women. And I think that I felt at the end of everything that was done that for some for somehow that I basically hadn't done enough, you know. Wow. But um, it was just it was just great. And um, I'm trying to give you all something that's concrete versus saying that oh it was great. Right. right. <laughs> oh gosh, but I, I will say that overall we were able to as an organization that we took suitcases uh, of clothing for the women. Uh, that was one thing that took place, and so we were able to. There was a total of um, 
12 young mentees, so we were able to take uh, suitcases of clothing that mm. we actually left to bless them with. Mm. Um, not only that, but as a whole, the organization, through the fundraising, uh, if you've been following, we did, uh, Pastor and I participated in a, a We Dance right, fundraiser. Right, right. And so uh, with the funds that were raised, we were able to, um, as an organization, we raised funds to allow these young women of the Maasai tribe, who if you know anything about uh, African culture, they uh, in history are uneducated and they are seen but not heard. Mm -hmm. And so this was um, an opportunity where they have opened their own agrivet, which is a store, it's, all, it's like a storefront not like a storefront, it is a storefront, mm -hmm. where they uh, will be selling uh, things to help uh, people with their agriculture, those who are farming, who uh, rear livestock for selling, you mm -hmm. know, goats, cows, wow. those different things for. Yeah. So they, they are actually, uh, there was a ribbon cutting ceremony where they actually um, opened their store. Wow. And... Um, it's just amazing to That's see, awesome. yes, um, <laughs> what God has done. And on there was a dinner that was had where we all, the mentors and the mentees, received certification of, of appreciation for just sticking with the program. Mm -hmm. And what Dr. D did that particular night is that she um, gave us a charge. She gave us a charge to... Uh, create a dream statement, uh, uh, creating a dream statement as far as how you would like, what is your dream, what is your vision of how you would like to see the world? And with that dream, from that, what is your part in, in taking action to cause that dream to come to pass? Mm. What will you do wow. to see that to, to come to pass? Wow. And then she had them to make a declaration that they will commit to making their dream a reality. Praise and God. Um, it was just, it was just, it was amazing. So, but again, thank you for your prayers. Thank you for mm. your support. Um, just getting behind me and rally, rallying behind me. Uh, I just, the, the way that this year has started off, <laughs> yeah, I just right? believe that it, it's only up from here. God can only do, continue to uh, build on this momentum. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, this year is going to be, <laughs> it's going to be off the charts, people. <laughs> I believe that, not just for my life individually, but I believe that for the body of Christ, for those who uh, have their faith and, and trust in God, I believe that this year will be like none other. Wow. Um, because I think that over the last few years, we've really experienced some hardships. And I just think that uh, mm. God is ready just to do something new. Amen. Mm. Amen. And, yeah. I, and I said on, on Sunday, I mentioned that this is the year of do better. Mm. This is what the Lord has told me, that this is the year mm. of do better. Mm -hmm. uh, we will make up our minds that we're going to do better. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I shared, I don't know if I shared it Sunday or I shared it last Wednesday. But I said one of the things that the Lord spoke to me, and um, I will always remember this as part of my um, uh, my goal in, in reaching those things that he put forward to me is he, he told me for me not to come to him, to ask him to do things for me mm -hmm. that, I, that he's already given me the ability to do for myself. Right. I remember you saying that mm -hmm. one year. Yep, and so that's one of the things, and that, that what, what God is saying is that we have to take responsibility for the things that he's already given us. Mm -hmm. And so that goes back into my Sunday teaching. Sunday's teaching, I talked about stewardship. Mm -hmm. And so even tonight, it's, it's, it's in reference to stewardship, but it's in reference to how do we steward over our bodies mm -hmm. and understanding that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I said this last week, I said that, you know, we are good at remembering those three areas in our lives that we say we need to store it over. That's our uh, uh, time, talents, and our treasures. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we're good at that, time, talents, and treasures. Mm -hmm. 
And I said that we, we concentrate on those things, on our treasures, treasures meaning our money, how do we give, you know, make sure we're giving out of our heart, mm-hmm. make sure that we're giving the people, make sure that we have a good heart because God loves a cheerful giver. And right. so, you know, we look at those things and then we say, well, what else can we do? Well, how, how, much, are you, how much time are you spending, mm-hmm. you know, doing God's business or doing God's work? How much, how are you utilizing your time? Are you managing your time properly? And we talked about that and we said that, you know, we need to make sure that we're good stewards over our time. Mm-hmm. And then we said we need to be good stewards over the talents that God has given us. And when we say talents, sometimes we think about the arts. When we think about talents, we always think about singing or dancing or, or but the art, the, our talents are also like the media. How well are you in, in production and how well are you in, in, in carpentry and just the gifts that God has given us. Right. And so we always try to... Um, concentrate on those things but the thing that we taught last Wednesday sweetheart and you were not here uh, was that even in those three areas if you are not taking care of your body it makes it harder to accomplish those areas those other areas in your life how can you give God your best and your talents and then your and your talents and your treasures and then your time if you're sick right. you know if you're not taking care of yourself mm-hmm. if you're not healthy right. and w- one of the things that we mentioned also is that um, and I said this two weeks ago, well, almost two Sundays ago, I said there are three occurrences in our lives mm-hmm. um, that, that, that happens with us, three occurrences. And I said there are natural occurrences, mm-hmm. um, there are self-imposed occurrences, and then there are spiritual occurrences, whether or not God imposed them on us or whether or not Satan imposed them on mm-hmm. us, they're spiritual. And I said a lot of times when we deal with our bodies, our bodies are weak or out of shape because it's a self-imposed uh, decision that we have made or a, a self-imposed decision we did not make. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of times, you know, we desire to do things. We desire to get better. We desire to, 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 to be in good health, but we don't make the decisions to do that. We don't, we don't, um, whatever that it, it may be. Right. And I use you last week as an example uh, I asked everyone, I said, uh, we had all this equipment up here, just, the, the, you know, the weights and everything, and I'm up here, and man, I'm busting these weights out. And I said, hey, man, all this stuff came from home. I said, and I asked the general, you know, uh, public, I said, how, uh, who do you think uses all these things, guys? And they said, you, 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 pastor, you, you and the first lady. I said, nope, I don't use none of this stuff. I said, this is all the first lady stuff. <laughs> This came out of her little her, her little little area that she's made in the house. She's made of one little room in her little exercise room. And I was talking about you, how you have decided that your body is important. And can you tell me why why do you, I mean, you, you're up in the mornings. Uh, you've just been diligent. In the mornings, I leave for work, and then you go into, and you have, well, tell us, baby, your, your exercise. I mean, I know you're just coming back from Kenya, but prior to going to Kenya, you know, tell us about your regimen and, and why do you do it? Why do you tell us about your regimen and why do you do it? Well, uh, to be totally transparent and honest, this microphone right here. Mm-hmm. Is that better? Yes, better. Yes. Okay. To be totally transparent uh, and honest, okay, <laughs> my primary reason for doing it is that I do not want the middle aged bulge. <laughs> I'm just going to keep it 100, what? even though this is not keeping 100 man, Wednesday. Cut this. We got to edit that out. We got to edit that. That ain't what I was looking for. I'm just going to keep gotta it edit 100. That. Come okay? on. We got to edit that, man. Ugh. I am 52 years of age, but I don't want to look like it. So I'm just going to keep it 100. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> but I know that in that, right, mm-hmm. um, that's not the only reason, but that is my primary reason. Because when I think about even in what you're saying tonight, when I think about uh, even trekking to uh, Kenya Mm -hmm. and just the toll that it had on my body, it was like a, what, 12 hour, you know how I am with all that time and stuff, but it was like a 12 hour flight. No, but it was 20, total flight was 22. Well, I'm saying one way. Oh, one way. No, I'm, I'm telling you. Oh, Your really? entire flight time was 22 hours. Oh, really? See, yes. I didn't even know that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mariah's like, yep. Yeah. Yep. You yes. went to Kenya. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but, so if so, if you are not really um, 
physically fit, you may have some ta- some challenges. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and just really keeping up the momentum of uh, having to, you know, your diet, mm-hmm. you know. And so there, there are a number of things. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that in order to fulfill or on, in order to do what God is calling us to do, we need to be physically fit. Mm-hmm. Uh, because he's calling us to go into the highways and byways preaching the gospel, and that some of that may be physically. Right. And so we have to be able right. to have enough stamina. We have to be able That's to have word. enough stamina. That's uh, a good word. Uh, strength and, and, and not be um, tired, grow weary, um, because it may be some long treks or long walks that we may have to, right. to, 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 to yeah. make in this thing. And so um, I believe that that is very important for us to be able to do that. So that entails not only exercise and keeping our body moving, uh, because I find that when I do, so to go back to your question, yes. what is my regimen? So mm-hmm. in the mornings, I get up and I do a um, anywhere from a 30 to 40 minute uh, virtual exercise that I have with um, I actually. I pay the service monthly, and I will give a shout out to the reset coach, Tracy Randolph. And Tracy um, Randolph. so okay. she offers a um, a virtual class. It's almost like a um, you have you use resistance bands, you use weights, you you just do. Sometimes you just use your body as the equipment. This is a resistance band. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So resistance she bands. Okay. yes. So there is a variety of exercises. And then after I do that, <laughs> I ain't gonna pop you. <laughs> yeah, uh huh. <laughs> and so after we do that, then um, I personally work on my core, and then I uh, I do some jump rope. I, I do that just as a way to um, get in some uh, additional cardio. Okay. Now you said virtual, meaning that it's live. She's actually doing it live. Yes, it's a video. It's it's live. It's live. Mm-hmm. So she's actually teaching it's a class. It's a Zoom right? call. It's, it's a, a Zoom, Zoom call. Yes. She's teaching you live exercise, and you're basically watching the screen like they're like people are doing with us tonight. Correct. Mm-hmm. It's and like a virtual exercise. Wow. Like you go to have a, a class. Right. Except you're in your comfort of your own home. Yes. Now, man, now that's that's good, isn't it? I mean, I, you don't have to leave the house. No. Man, so that eliminates one excuse. Yes, <laughs> it does. Okay. It does. Um, and then, so with that, I've been doing that. And so, of course, um, trying to watch what I eat. Um, so you know that. You're like, yeah. what? Do I? <laughs> yeah. But really just trying to be mindful because I do n- realize that um, being small is – you still have to watch what you eat. Oh, that was at me? Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, that was it. Oh, oh, she was she. Yeah, uh-huh. Oh, she. Oh. You still have to watch what you eat. Yeah. I, I heard the small part, but then yeah, uh, uh-huh. you pat me like I thought you pat me that I was small, yeah. like, you know, but the emphasis was eat. Because small what I eat. doesn't always mean healthy. Ooh, and that's wow. The thing. And that, I need to write that, is, that down. Y'all need to write that, this down. That's small the thing doesn't that I, always. I, I think that people, um, they lose sight of. Because a person wow. like you, you'll feel like you don't have to exercise because you're small. Th- yeah. But that's true. But and we know that, you know, I'm just saying, I'm not going to throw you under the bus. You already did. Did I? You did everything <laughs> except blew the horn right now. You ain't blow the horn. At least blow the horn. <laughs> bom, bom. At least let me know you coming. But. Yes, sweetheart. You know, I constantly tell you that you need to exercise more because you're out of breath. You know, you're, you know, as far as um, your stamina, you know, s- as far as being awake, sleeping, you know, during the daytime, you may, you know, get a little <laughs> tired. But okay, we were talking about your resume. <laughs> I don't know how we got on me. Okay, um, so, but yeah. that's it. Yes, so okay. that's it. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right, and so, and I've made up my mind that this year I'm going to get in, get in shape, man. And mm-hmm. you saw me last night. I'm, I'm getting the garage ready so I can get myself together. You got your little area, mm-hmm. and so I'm getting my little area together so I can at least start on the treadmill. I believe that starting somewhere, um, 
small, you know, and having small yes. goals is better than not having a goal at all, or either making a big goal and never even moving towards the goal. Yes. Um, and so one of the things that I wanted to say tonight was that, that our bodies are instruments. Mm -hmm. uh, and when, when, when God created our bodies, he said he created our bodies in, in his image, in his likeness. And so we don't have, Nicole's not here tonight, and so you all may want to join us in your own Bible reading, I mean, turning your own pages or using your, your devices because the, 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 the scriptures will not be coming up on your screen tonight. Well, I'll try to copy and paste them in you, here. You try to. Mm -hmm. I don't know about maybe. Um, so I'm, I'm going to Genesis chapter chapter 1. Uh, uh, let me see. I think I want to go to one first. Where are we going? Uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Genesis 1 and 26. In the New Living Translation, NLT. Okay, you can and, go ahead and read and it. Then I'm, it's funny. I told them that it's not going to be on the screen, and then I look up and read it. <laughs> that, that, those are, those, those, that's that's those, out of habit. Yeah, huh? it's out of habit. What man. version? Uh, New Living Translation. Okay. Verse 26. Verse 26. 1 and 26. Okay. Uh, Genesis 1 and 26, it says, Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image to be like us. So an image is it's, it's something that um, resembles something else. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So he, he said, well, let us make man out of our own, out of our image. So let, let us create something that, that resembles us. Mm -hmm. He said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth and the small animals that scurry along the ground. And then verse 27 says, so God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. And then the Bible goes on in verse 28 and says, then God blessed them and said, that now he gives them a charge. He creates the body, he creates the human beings, and then he tells them, this is what I need you to do. This is what I want you to do. He says, now I bless you, meaning that I empowered you. I've empowered your body. I, I've empowered your entire being. Mm -hmm. I've empowered you to do this. I empowered you to be fruitful. I empower you to multiply. Mm -hmm. I empower you to fill the earth and govern it. And then I empower you to reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Uh, and so in order for us to do that, we have to be in a physical shape in order to do that. And, of course, this is before the fall of man. Uh, when I say the fall of man, this is before sin entered into the earth. And so man was at its maximum. I mean, people, someone asked me the other day, I think it was, uh, yeah, someone asked me the other day, said, how was it that men, were old, that men and women were able to live like 600 years old, yeah. 700 years old? How was that possible? Years, right. 900 years old. Yes. How was that possible? And I had to try to explain to them that the reason being why we don't do it anymore is because, number one, sin entered into the earth. And once sin entered into the earth, it entered into the hearts of men, and, it, and men and women, it's not gender, gender specific. And once it entered into us, into, it, become, it became our nature, sin, it does not build life, it takes life away. Mm -hmm. That is destructive. Sin right. is destructive. And so when sin came into the earth, everything that was, that was perfect, everything that was uh, cultivated and that 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 was fruitful and that you know was able to to uh, maximize its potential mm -hmm. once sin touches it it takes away the potential of what it could be and so in to, to include our bodies and so now you have in the very beginning I don't see where it, during the the garden experience with Adam and Eve I don't see anywhere where they they ate animals anything like that their diet was vegetables. Right. And, of course, there was no fertilizer, nothing like that. And so they were eating the very best of, of, of God's product mm -hmm. here on the earth, the very best. Mm -hmm. And along with that, and even after sin entered to the world, it took years, but it was progressive. The, 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 our, our, our lifespan became progressively less mm -hmm. and less and less as mankind went on. 
Right. And so now we, we see the average, I think they said the average uh, lifespan for a human being now is like 70 years old, 75 years old is the average. That's like, you, that's like what, 90% of what we used to be able to live. 90% of that is now gone now. Now we only live like 70 years is the average uh, uh, t- uh, span. And then look at our bodies at 70 years old. At 70 years old, we're, we're really practically can't really do a whole lot. And, that, and back in the day, you could be 500 years old and still, still walk across the earth, you know, uh, they, uh, God told Abraham, I want you to go to a land that you know not of. And when you get there, I don't know how far I didn't do my Bible study, find out how far Abraham walked. But he wasn't or walked or rode the horse or whatever the case may be. But they were in opt- optimum shape. Even Jesus, when he came on the scene, there was no automobiles. So everywhere they went, they either, they either walked or they used uh, uh, some type of um, uh, four, four, uh, four-legged beast. Uh, and I don't even recall in the story, the only time I recall Jesus being on a four-legged beast is when he told the disciples, go into the town and go get a donkey. You remember that, Sister Mary? That's the only time I, remember, I recall him even riding on a, 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 an animal. So that meant he walked everywhere he went. And if he walked, of course, the disciples walked. So they were in, they were in, in good shape. And so now here we are today, and we basically, we, like my wife said, I'm, I get out of shape just walking up a flight of steps. Yeah, what well, you were talking about as far as uh, how long we, as far as age mm-hmm. and how long we were living before. Um, go to here and here uh, to Genesis chapter 6. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to, I want to make sure I'm not using it out of the wrong context. Uh, but this is, I'm going to read verses 1 through uh Three. Okay. And it says, uh, then the people began to multiply on the earth and daughters were born to them. The sons of God saw the beautiful women and took any, uh, any they wanted as their wives. Then the Lord said, my spirit will not put up with humans for such a long time, for they are only mortal flesh. In the future, their normal lifespan will be no more than 120 years. Wow. Wow. I was just reading because I, I was just reading this because I started reading that, you know, how you do the chronological Bible thing. Yeah. And I remember reading that and I was like, wait a minute, I remember reading that somewhere. Wow. So I don't know if this is part of the curse. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm thinking it may have been, but mm-hmm. um, I just remember reading that and I, yeah. I wanted to bring that out. So because before, like as you said, yeah. We were, they were living to 900 years. Yeah. Well, and so even to live to be 120 in today would be like a mi- miraculous. They right. do, they do, and when you live to be 100, they, they, they send in the newscast right. down there because you live to be 100 years old. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and so, and, 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 and wow, we've lost so much. But because we've lost so much, doesn't mean you can you can regain. You, you we can regain. That's right. Um, what the canker worm and the locusts have stolen from us, yes. we're able to go back and get it. Um, one thing that I wanted to bring back. Let's go back. Let's go to um, uh, what is it? First Corinthians chapter. It's a scripture, of course, we used last week. First Corinthians chapter um, uh, nine. First Corinthians chapter nine, verse twenty-seven. First Corinthians chapter nine, verse twenty-seven. What verses are you going to read? Uh, I'm, still gonna, I'm still coming out of the uh, New Living Translation. Mm-hmm. And um, what verses so I can put them in the... Um, so, um, I, 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 I got my notes over here. Da, 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 okay, bum. it's only... That's the last verse but in I that chapter. I think I'm going to go to... Um, uh, okay, all right. That's not even the one that I want right now. Hold on, sweetheart. But I, what is it, six? That's the one I used last week, First Corinthians. Uh, chapter six. Chapter six. There you go, sister. Thank you. Okay. What was the verse, Miss Mary? Okay. All right. That's all right. That's where I wanted to go, Sister Mary. Thank you. Uh, First Corinthians, chapter six, verse seven. I mean, verse uh, 19, 
It says, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. So we must honor him. It didn't say that we, you know, we have a choice in that. And so one thing, you know, I, was, I, I remember saying this, that when you say you love something or love something or love somebody, then your motive has to always be pure in terms of showing that. We, we say this a lot. We say that love is an action word. And so if love is an action word, then God is no different. When we tell God we love him, he expects some type of response, positive response out of that. Right. And so we saying we love him. So how do we show him that we love him? Mm -hmm. Some people say, well, how do you what do you give a God who already has everything? You you give him number one, you give him your heart. We Mm -hmm. start there with the heart. Mm -hmm. But then after you give him your heart, because once you give him your heart, then everything else will follow. It's supposed to follow if you truly have given him your heart. And so here God is saying that our body does not belong to us. So what's the purpose of God giving us our body? I said this earlier. I said that he didn't give it to us so that our, our, our bodies would be um, like or- ornaments so that we can just walk around and have a good body. You said that earlier. Oh, I get shake because I don't want to have a, what you say? I don't want to have a what? Right. Uh, a middle-aged A middle-aged bulge. bulge. So I get shake because I don't want to have a middle-aged bulge. And God is saying and if you do that, and that's your only motive behind that, then you're walking around as an ornament. Right. You're worried about how you look, mm-hmm. not so much how, how you look pleases God. Because our, and this is the thing, we, get, we have gotten so caught up in what <clears throat> society says how we ought to look. Mm-hmm. And you said this, and then we're going to say just the opposite too. Just because you're small does not make you healthy. Right. And just because you're big doesn't make you unhealthy that's either. That's correct. That's correct. You know what I'm yes. saying? And I like how you said that as far as our bodies not being in, you said ornament. An ornament. ornament. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that that's it's kind of like twofold because you can, not only are we an ornament, but at the same time, we have to be a representation. So right. I think that not, not being as concerned as far as what we're putting on it, clothing, apparel, mm-hmm. jewelry, mm-hmm. you know, designer, whatever, clothing, cloths, all of those things, mm-hmm. adorning the actual flesh, mm-hmm. but actually being concerned with the actual what's underneath the clothing. Right. What's, you know, <clears throat> and so. And that goes back to mindset again, because we have gotten to the mindset that if we look good, we are good. Right. And that's not true. Right. You know, you can look good. And, and not be healthy at all. Right. And, and so, and I mean, we look at the, we talked about, you know, when um, my body was attacked with cancer. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I felt healthy. I was overweight and I felt healthy, but I didn't know that nothing was wrong. And then by the time, you know, we get the test done, they say I'm at um, stage three cancer. But I didn't, I didn't think nothing of it. I'm thinking I'm okay. I'm good to go. I just have a little, you know, just some, some abnormal uh, things that, happening. That's the key. Ab- you, so it's almost like, though, and that's how we do our natural bodies. We have signs, mm-hmm. but we disregard them. Yeah. And <clears throat> one sign is walking up a set of stairs and running out of breath. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's a sign. There's something wrong. Right. right. You know, yes, and and that's why I got to do better this year. I got to do no, and I, and I said I was going to change my language. I said I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say uh, I got to. I'm not gonna say uh, I need to. I'm not gonna say uh, my c- confession out of my mouth. And I and I started on Sunday is that this is what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm not going to say what I'm what I want to do got or to do. I got, got to. You know, I'm just I I am this going to do this. All right. You know, it's no longer mm-hmm. talking about it, but it's, it's be- becoming it. Mm-hmm. It's becoming it. And I said this in the first of the year. I said that this year my body will be in the best shape it has, it has ever been in in my life. Amen. Man, people are like, Can that, is that possible? Yeah, it yeah, is possible. It is. It is possible because if I honor God with my temple, and that's one of the things we said last week, right, Sister Mary? We said that in the Old Testament, we... God began living in the tabernacle, and then he moved from the tabernacle to the temple. 
And then from the temple, he moved into us mm. and, our, and our bodies. And mm. now he calls our bodies the temple. That's and so now we have to still represent if he lives in us. And this is what the scripture we just got finished reading in 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 6, that we are the bodies, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Right. And God lives in us. Right. And so if God lives in us, how are we taking care of that? Right. You know, how are we, what are we doing to take care of our bodies? How, what are we doing? Now we can go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. Okay. And this is Paul. All right, all right, let's begin with uh, verse 25 in the New Living Translation, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25, I'll, I'll start reading. And it's in the New Living Translation. It says, all athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize. We do what? What do we do? All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize. That will fade away. But we do it for eternal prize, for an eternal prize. We do what? We're disciplined. We're disciplined. We discipline. We, we, we exercise discipline mm -hmm. because we, look, we do it because there is an eternal prize at the end of it. Right. Then it says, so I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Mm -hmm. I train my body to do what it should. So our bodies have, have a makeup and it's designed to do certain things. But it's just like any other thing, any other product. If you don't take care of it, it will rust. It will fade away. It will, what we call it, fair wear and tear. Mm -hmm. And so our bodies are designed, if you don't take care of it, and I, I, I say, as, as me, with me having an automotive background, an automotive technical background, I would tell people, if you take care of your vehicle, it will take care of you. And that's the same thing with our bodies. If we take care of our bodies, it will take care of us. Uh, longevity does have, has its place, but it only has its place if you applying measures to make sure longevity is its purpose. Mm -hmm. And he says that I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what I, it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. He's saying that I can't, if I don't practice what I preach, I, I myself going to be disqualified just like, any, just like an athlete. There's another scripture somewhere that says that uh, bodily exercise profiteth little. Bodily exercise profiteth little. And what the Bible is saying that if, yes, it may profit profit little, profits little, but it is still necessary. And I think I got that somewhere too. Bodily effort, exercise profit this profit profits little. And I think that actually, I think it might have been um, might have been Jesus who said that. Let's go to um, let me see Ephesians chapter five verse twenty nine. I think that might be it. Did you find this real? Uh, yes. But I found it in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and 8. There you go. Okay, mm -hmm. 1 Timothy 4, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. Okay. Mm -hmm. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8, and then the New Living Translation, it reads like this. And um, I'm trying to see if I want to start off with verse 7. Because verse 7 leads into verse 8. It says, do not waste verse 7. Do not waste time arguing over godless, godless ideals and old wives' tales. Instead, train yourself to be godly. Train yourself to be godly. Then he goes on, verse 8. Physical training is good. But training for God, godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. And so what people sometimes will use this and say, you know, as a reason not to uh, put the correct emphasis on training your body and getting right. in shape. They say, oh, well, you know, exercise profits little. The Bible says exercise profits little. 
you know, and but what Timothy is saying here, what Paul is saying to Timothy is that there has to be a balance. Exactly. You, you just can't just be so, high, what we used to say, you're so spiritually, high, you're so spiritually minded <laughs> that you know earthly Earth, good. Right. You're so spiritually minded that you know earthly good. Right. You 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 you're so you you know the Bible from Genesis to uh, um, Revelations. You know this. You know that. You know all the prayers that Jesus prayed, but you're out of shape. And we ask you to read, stand up, and, and stand up and and and, and read. You know, or, or conduct maybe uh, uh, an event. You know that requires to be outside doing outreach. You got to sit down. Because you got a shape. And I think basically to me, in my when I read this, it's saying to me that yes, you can exercise, but don't just make the outward man look good. Oh, that's good. So it's not just the outward man. Right. You need to be godly as well on the inside. Right. So it's it's the inside, just like you were saying, we're not just an ornament. Right. But it's what's on the inside. That's right. That's that's what's most important. It's 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 two things. They, they go hand in hand. Right. The exactly. inside and the outside. That's right. They go hand, so on, hand in hand. So if you get physically fit and you do all this every day, and if I'm just only concerned with my bulge, mm-hmm. <laughs> but not about my spirit, man, yeah. if I'm not getting the word in, right, so what good does that do? Because right, I'm still right. rotten. <laughs> wow. That's a strong word, rotten. I mean, hey. That's a strong it's, word. I'm still going to be foul. Yeah. It's like. My Strong. outward man may look good, but what is my heart? Right. And we know that God God focuses on the outward yeah. man. We've been talking. You all have anything? You want to say anything? <laughs> Nothing? Yeah? Me and my wife, we were talking uh, We were talking about last week's Bible study, and I said, sweetheart, I said, I didn't get a lot of comments, you know, about, uh, you know, this physical exercise thing. I said, uh, you know, maybe we're touching, you know, nerves of, you know, uh, or areas where people really don't really want to hear this, you know. And I was like, but it's necessary. Yeah, and I, th- I don't think we got real a lot. We don't we didn't really didn't ask for a lot of out input. Yeah, there. I'm just saying, you know, just comments in general, not so much even questions. But I got a question. How have you served God with your body? A general question to the public out there and even in here. How have you served God with your body? If, if your body belongs, if our body does not belong to us, but he has lent it to us, mm-hmm. how have we served it? How do we serve him using our body? We talked about our time, our talents, and our treasures. So how do we use our body to serve the Lord? Hmm. Well, I'll answer just in waiting for others. Unless, did you want to go first, Miss Mary? Go ahead. Uh, uh, Mariah, I got a mic for you back there. It's, she has one. Oh, I you got one? one. Oh, <laughs> I got you, dear. Okay, you're good. I don't know. I think we we can serve the Lord with our bodies in different way, ways, many different ways. Um, uh, for for one one way it, we could uh, use our bodies to serve the Lord is just coming here at our sanctuary every Sunday, Wednesday night, being a part of the usher board, uh, uh, being a part of the greeting greeters, or being being a part of the media service, or being a part of the praise and worship. Mm-hmm. That's that's using our bodies to <coughs> to um, to uh, serve the Lord. Or we could use our bodies to go outside and talk to others about mm-hmm. the Lord. So those those ways. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. That's good. You you got anything, Mariah? Um, I mean, it's just, it's just can, can you uh, it's a see. button on there? Yeah. Button till the it, green light comes yeah. on. Oh, okay. There, there we, we go. go. Um, for me, I mean, I'm really big on fitness. So I. And so I you could teach so this class tonight. <laughs> oh, no, so no. man, I need you to be pouring into <laughs> us. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I really um, think about that in terms of like fitness and what I eat, especially. So that's one way I try to honor the Lord. It's like He gave me this body, mm-hmm. um, so I want to do my best to keep it at a place where I can physically do the things I want. Mm-hmm. I personally don't think about weight. I really just think about like. I even have started thinking about when I exercise, like using that as a time to be grateful to the Lord for what my body can do. Mm. Like, because especially once I had a car accident, I hurt my knee, mm-hmm. and it's like it's only until you hurt something when you realize how much you need it. Right, yes. right, right. And so since then, I've always just I've now used that time to actually like worship the Lord almost. Mm-hmm. That's good. Of, like. Mm-hmm. I'm grateful I can do this. I'm grateful I can squat now. I'm that's right. good. Wow. Um, so that's one way. That's yeah. awesome. That's good. That's awesome. That's good. 
That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and I was going to add to that. That's some good stuff right there. I was going to add also that, <clears throat> as the scripture says, we, we our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we allow the Holy Spirit to use our bodies um, to, you know, speak words of edification. Uh, we let, allow the Holy Spirit to <clears throat> to operate in and through us to do those things that Miss Mary said. And um, wow, also what Mariah said, which I never really thought about that when I'm exercising, but we can use it, you know, to worship Lord, the God, the, the Lord, to yeah. really use it as a an opportunity just to praise Him for who He is. Right. Yeah. And, and I think that really, when you think about it, that's really the ultimate use of our body why we were created, why we, were created. <laughs> we were created to give him praise we were created to to give him glory and our bodies are instruments of praise yes. you know before there was a tambourine before there was a horn before there were drums there was nothing but the bodies yes and our bodies were the instruments of praise. We were praising with the, with the yes. clap. We were praising yes. with the sound of our voice. We were praising him, you know, with the with the, the, the dance. You know, before there was the musical instruments. And so God still looks at that. And I really believe that if we go back to that and begin to honor him, I, and it really has to do with our perspective, our perspective in terms of how we see our bodies. We really, number one, we have to see our bodies as not being our own. You have to really think about it, that your body's not your own. It belongs to the Lord. And, of course, we're talking to the body of Christ, you know, because sinner, a sinner doesn't, you know, understand that or don't believe that or don't care to know that. But as Christians, you know, we have to realize that our bodies are not our own. We belong to the Lord. And they were, it was really purchased with a price. And so we are supposed to honor our bodies with, the, with, 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 with uh, our honor the Lord with our bodies. And a lot of times we think that, you know, dishonoring the body is smoking cigarettes, um, having, you know, uh, illegal sex, you know, things of that nature. But eating improperly is a dishonor to the Lord's body. And not exercising. And not exercising is a dishonor. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to be real quick. Let's go to uh, Psalms chapter 139. Psalms 139, verses 13 and 14. Psalms 139. Um, um, wow. Man, all this is good. Uh, I'm in the New Living Translation. I, I, I just want to begin with, I, I guess I just want to read it from verse 1, and I'm going to read down to uh, verse, 14, verse 14. Okay, I'm not going to yeah. post that down. Yeah, verse 1 through uh, Psalms 139, verse 1 through 14. Mm-hmm. It says, O Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I am going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. Mm. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the furthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night, but even in darkness I cannot hide from you. To you the night shines as bright as day, darkness and darkness. To you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. 
how well I know it. How well I know it. And I'm going to stop right there. God is, I mean, this is like poetry when you think about who we are and, God, and how God created our bodies. And some of us don't like our bodies. You know, some people just don't like their body. They don't like their body. They don't like how God created them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will say this, too. If, you, if you're out there and you don't like your body, I'll say this to you as God said it to me. If you don't like your body and there's something that you can change and, and God has already given you the ability to change it, then change it. Now, if it's something that, God, that you were born with and you can't change, for example, like the color of your skin, you know, you may say you're too dark or you're too light, you know, you, you have to get to the place where you realize God created you that way, mm-hmm. and so magnify him that yes. way anyway. Yes. God says, in all things, give thanks, for yes. it is the will of God mm-hmm. according to, 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 to what he desires of us. Mm-hmm. So give thanks to those things you can't change and glorify the, glorify the Lord, your creator, mm-hmm. as your creator, and glorify him mm-hmm. That's good. and exalt him. Mm-hmm. He made you. The Bible says here he made you. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well... I know it, you know, and so that's the understanding. Get to the point where God made you the way you are. Yes. And if there's something you can change, change it. If you're overweight and you know that by, by eating properly and exercising will get you down to, a, to, a, to a, the weight that you want, mm-hmm. then do that. Mm-hmm. But don't hate yourself. Right. The Bible says this. The, Jesus was having a conversation with, 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 with a man, and the man came up and said, Jesus, what do I need to, be, what do I need to, what do, I need to do to get saved? Mm-hmm. Jesus said, love the Lord, Lord, love the Lord thy God. No, he said, keep all the commandments. And the man responded back. He said, I've kept all the commandments. From my youth, I've kept all the commandments. He said this, and Jesus came back and responded. He said, well, Lord, love the Lord thy God with all the heart, soul, and mind. And he, he said, uh, and he said, um, and the man, uh, the man responded and said, well, I do that also. And then Jesus said, well, sell all that you have and give it to the poor. And the Bible says the man walked away sad. He couldn't do that. He couldn't do that. But the part that I wanted to bring out was God, Jesus said, love the Lord thy, lo, lo, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right. Love your neighbor as yourself, meaning that you have to start with yourself. You need to love yourself first before before you can can even attempt to love your neighbor. Mm -hmm. And some of us don't even love ourselves. So love begins at home, in home. When I say home, I'm talking about here, the heart, where not where your physical live, you're not where your geographical residence is, but in the heart. You have to love yourself first. And if you want to honor God, honor him by loving yourself first. I really believe that. I believe that we can honor God by loving ourselves first. And if you love it, you don't hurt that which you love. You cherish that which you love. You cultivate that which you love. You you nourish that which you love. And so the God is saying the same thing to our bodies. Love your body. I believe it was somewhere we read last week. It says that no man uh, hates his own body or or, or, or what was that we were talking about um, I think it was in Corinthians, we've talked about, it was really talking about the husband loving the wife Mm -hmm. and said that we are to love the wife as Christ loved the body, that no man hates his own body. Mm -hmm. And so, though they were talking about, but he goes on in that same scripture said that we are to take care of our bodies. And if we're going to take care of our bodies, that's that's where it starts. Mm -hmm. Love starts at home, in your body, taking care of yourself. And that's how you, you want to know what you can do for God? Love, love God. Love them with your body yourself. by loving yourself. Amen. By loving yourself. Um, sometimes we think exercise, you know, getting in shape is, is hard, sweetheart. And, and I think we had some things. I just want you to really quickly uh, have some things highlighted on here. What is this? What is something that we can do just just the beginning? Somebody who just, I mean, you talked about what you do on a virtual level mm-hmm. at at home. Mm-hmm. What is something that someone who's who's out of shape? Somebody like me just trying to get back into shape. What are some of the things that we can start off doing? I think you can just start just with a, I mean, just a, a short walk. Just a short walk. Inside your home. Uh, you can walk from the 
kitchen to the you know living room. You can do that several times. It doesn't have to be something grandiose. Yeah, you said that and reminds me that after I had the operation after the after the, mm -hmm. the cancer and I had the operation and remember I could barely walk and you made me get up and walk the house. She made me walk the house. I couldn't walk up the hill, the driveway, but she made me walk the house. And so I walked the house. I had to like walk the house like mm -hmm. 10 times. It was a small area, you know, right. but I had to do it. But that built me up to walk the driveway. Anything helps. Anything it helps. It did. It built me up to start you, walking the driveway. If you think about it like this, if you, if you have a car or even a bike, but if you plant that bike and you don't move it for a length of time, what happens? Yeah, the air goes out of it. The, the it's like it, the, the, the bike or the car, the tires become conditioned and they end up flat on one side. Right. Our bodies are the same way. Right. Ooh, yeah, Our bodies good. are the same way. When we don't move them, when we find ourselves horizontal, laying down all day, that's not good for your body. It's not good for the body. It's not good for our body. So we have to get up and do some type of activity, you you have to do something. And not even, I mean, even, because I remember it was one point when, I can't even remember where when it was, but you was like, I'm just too tired, I just can't. Mm. I mean, even with your size, you're saying, I'm just too tired, I just can't, I don't, I'm not, I don't have the strength, but mm -hmm. you've got to do, that's, and that's part of it, you don't have the strength because you're not doing anything. Right. Right. You gotta. You have to get your cardio move. You've got to get your your heart pumping, moving. You got to get your blood circulating in order to build the endurance and the stamina and the strength. Right. So if you don't do anything, you'll never have the strength to do right. it. Right. And I said this last week. I said that the Bible says this: keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And I said we look at that in the spiritual sense, but in the physical sense, that's true as well. You have to keep your heart with all diligence. Yeah. You have to take care of your heart. Yeah. Yeah. You have to exercise your heart. You have to take care of your body. Exercise yes. your heart with all diligence. Yes. Don't just don't just you know be super spiritual and fill it with the word. Yes, that's great. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But we have to do something to keep it in, in, in order. Keep ourselves together. The Bible, uh, the Bible. Um, you've heard this uh, cliche: um, no pain, no gain. Yes. And so, and that's basically leads to what you were saying, that if you don't start, even if you start somewhere, it may hurt. It's going to hurt, but it's only going to hurt for a little while until you build the endurance. And then, you know, what, uh, 10 steps may lead to 20 steps. 20 steps may lead to a quarter of a mile. You know, you never know, but you set, set small goals yes. and then accomplish the small goals. Right, and if you have, you know, some physical challenges and consult with their physician right to see what it is that you can and can't do right to see what your limitations are right yeah because you may have some limitations physical limitations that your doctor may suggest but don't do this but you can do that right because you can sit in the bed even with the harm, harm weights like right. you're sitting here tonight you can get right. five pounds that's right that you can do something like that sit and watch the tv and they don't. And this is a ten pound weight right here. But yeah. you can get. They have them in two pound weights. Yes, they do. They have them in two pound weights, and you can just start Walmart, just somewhere. Academy Dicks. You can get them. Right. You can you can order them from Amazon. Yep. I mean, you can do the little the leg ankle wraps. Right. That little way you can wrap. sit on the bed and just lift your leg. Lift your leg. There's up. so many different things that yeah. that we can we do. Can do. It, it really is. I mean, um, Mariah, can you add anything to that? Being into fitness. Starting off, somebody just want to start off. Let me shoot, ask you to use your mic. I'm sorry, because people are listening. They want to learn tonight from you. It's funny we're talking about this, because I actually have family members who want to take their health seriously this year, like older family members. And there's actually tons of um, fitness instructors that do sitting workouts, where you're literally just sitting in a chair, and you just do leg lifts like you guys are talking about. And I've found that to be amazing. I even do it with them sometimes. So, wow, awesome. Um, yeah, you don't have to be able to lift tons of weight That's or right. run to That's be right. active. Mm -hmm. That's right. To are. be active, yeah. You can we, sit on the edge of your bed and do it. Yeah, yeah. And we always think, and that's something, that was a key word, what you said, to be active. We think active is running, like, you know. Sprinting. Sprinting, yeah. <laughs> you know, getting ready for the Olympics or something. Marathon. Yeah. Marathon, yeah. But that's not be, being active means doing something more than what you've been doing. Sitting down, get up. Mm -hmm. You sitting down, get up. Uh, at my at my office now, I have um, uh, the type of desk where, and you've seen it, you've had it at your desk mm -hmm. and when you when you was at, uh, employed, uh, where 
um, if I'm sitting down, I can stand up and then my desk, I can raise my computer right. and everything mm -hmm. up and I can work standing up. Mm -hmm. And I do that throughout the day, periodically, you know, and if I get tired standing, then I lower it back down, I can sit down, mm -hmm. but I do that throughout the day. And that, man, it really makes a difference at yeah. the end of the day. Yeah. And I just want to add, um, I, and I guess we're going to close it out tonight. It's because, yeah. I mean, you can keep going with this. But, right. uh, you know, because I think that even people take this time of the year, January, and do the fast. And they do, what is it, 21 day down your fast. Down your but fast. What yeah. is the point? What's the, really, what's your point in doing all of that? Mm -hmm. You're going to do that, but if you're not, um, I, I don't know. I just I think that even trying to do that and you're really not taking your health seriously. I, I mean, what's the point? It's like to me, it's like doing something out of tradition or religion. Right. Exactly. It, and that's it's really exactly what, what, what it is, is the meaning behind it. That's exactly because it what it really is. part of it is not only yes, it's to to get you in tune spiritually, but f physically, if your body, if you're really not where it should be, then what's the it's like you're gonna do the 21 days, and then you're gonna go right then you back, go back to, to eating pork chops, you know. And, yeah, there is really know. is no benefit. Right. It's really spiritually there is really no benefit. You may have, you know, higher uh, enlightenment for 21 days, but mm -hmm. what happens when you go right back down? You go as, yeah. so. You just go right really, back. Yeah. I think we should all just really consider what it is that we're doing and really not want to be tradition, do things out of tradition and religion, but ask God really to change our, our mindset, yeah. transform our thinking mm -hmm. so that we can really, really be uh, transformed and, and live our lives totally for him. And, and what you said in terms of just transforming our mindset, if you don't do something different, then you will never get different results. That's You're going right. to always get the same results. Um, but if you expect different results, but you keep doing the same thing, they said that's insanity. insanity. You're expecting something different. You're expecting a change, but you're not yeah. doing anything to change. Yeah. I, I'm challenging everyone who watches this, anyone who wants to hear or, or watch it. I'm challenging you. I said this year is a year of do better, meaning that you're going to have to do something different to do better. Mm -hmm. This is one of the things I'm doing better. I'm reading. I'm gathering more information. This is a book I'm reading. It says, um, The Healthy Living Handbook, The Simple Everyday Habits for Your Body, Mind, and Spirit. It's, it's a book, but what it does is that it allows us to have um, information that you normally may not have. And I'm going to lose my, there we go. Yeah, it's a little bit closer. The Healthy Living Handbook. And it's by, the author is Laura Harris-Smith. But, I mean, I'm encouraging you, pick up some material and start reading something different. You know what I mean? Read something different besides the Bible. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with reading the Bible. It's good that you read the Bible. But God has given us so much wisdom. He said, in all that getting, get, him, get him. He said, wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. How do you gather wisdom? You gather wisdom by gathering information. And then you gather, and they said, then he says that with all that getting, getting understanding. So now you gather wisdom, you gather information, and now you apply, you apply that, that information. You, you make it applicable to your life. And so I'm doing, I'm reading something different. I'm reading differently. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm cutting off the TV as much as I was. And, and, and I'm telling you, man, this is going to be a change. It's going to be a change. And that's my cue. My wife is cutting us off. That's my cue. Look, I can't leave, though, tonight without asking anyone, if you have never given your life to Christ before and you desire to do that, if you're looking at making a change in your life and you're looking at doing that, tonight's a good night to make a change. Tonight's a good night to give your, low, give your life to the, to the Lord. <clears throat> And when I say give your life to the Lord, I'm simply just talking about everything, every part of you. I, I believe that a lot of times we give our life to the Lord and he becomes our savior, but he does not become our Lord. And, and, and we, we suffer because we are expecting things to change in our lives and things don't change in our lives because we still have, we, we, we're, we're still taking full control of our lives. We've accepted, we've accepted a gift of salvation, but we have not accepted his rule. We have not accepted his, his guardianship. We have not accepted his, his uh, tutelage in terms of him teaching us how to live a better life. That comes when we make him our Lord. 
So tonight, if you want to make Jesus Christ your, not just your Savior, but your Lord, then there's a simple prayer that you can pray with me. We pray it every service, but like I say, like I say in every service, it's just an opening door of communication between you and the, and the, and the Father. I'm just going to lead you and, and begin. I want you to begin this conversation, but I really believe that this conversation can, can, t- can continue between you and, and Father, uh, our Heavenly Father. If that's you, pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, I come to you now. You know my life, and you know how I've lived it. I ask you, Father, to come into my heart. Cleanse me and forgive me of my sins. I believe in your son. His name is Jesus. He died on the cross for me. They buried him in a grave. But on the third day, He rose from the dead with all power in his hands. That power is what saves me. Thank you, Father, for saving me and giving me new life in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We celebrate you all. I don't know who you are, but I believe that the heavens are rejoicing. The angels in heaven are rejoicing, and I too, and we here are rejoicing with you if you're giving your life to Christ tonight. We bless you guys so much. Thank you so much for joining us and all of you that are here with us tonight. Thank you for joining us. And until the next time, which I pray if the Lord say the same, it will be Sunday. We'll be here Sunday teaching another word that I believe the Lord has placed in my heart to give his people. But between now and then, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May, the, may, may he continue to smile upon you. And may the blessings of the Lord make you rich and add no sorrow. I love you guys so much. I'm Pastor T here at the Bridge Church of Alabama. where we loving God, loving people, and pursuing purpose. Until the next time, I'm Pastor T. I'm out. I love you guys. Be blessed. Amen.